Good evening, my name is Palak Shah and I'm the founder and CEO of Ikaya. The topic of my talk today is the legacy of us all. Incredible legacies that we all leave behind, incredible legacies that we all strive to create through our lives. The legacies that make us etched in people's heart forever and make us immortal. I'll start my talk today by sharing a small story. The small story of a man called Dashrat Manji. I'm sure you've all watched this movie, Manji. If not, please allow me to run you through it again. Now, Dashat Manji in the 1960s lived in this small town near Gaya. This town was really small and the, and the closest medical facilities were available in this town called Vazir Ganj. Now, in order to get to Vazir Ganj, one had to cross a mountain and a very rocky one. Now, Dashat's wife was pregnant and now she was trying to cross the mountain to get medical help. But unfortunately, she ended up dying on the way. After this incident, Manji took it upon himself to carve a road through the mountain. So he took a hammer and he began hammering. For 22 years, he hammered and he hammered and he hammered. Now, a lot of people around him called him lunatic, called him mad, and called him all sorts of names. But that only made his resolute stronger. Dashrat became stronger in what he was really trying to do. Now, after 22 years, Dashrat successfully created a 360s feet long road, 25 deep feet deep road. Now my point that I'm really trying to make is, what was Dashra trying to do? Was he trying to create a legacy? Was he trying to get his name out there? Was he trying to create a name for himself? No, he was not trying to do any of those things. He was simply seeking to serve. Was Dashra trying to create a glory for himself? No, yet when he went to meet the ministers, they all stood up in his honor and offered him a chair. He was simply trying to serve. He was simply seeking to serve and he was simply trying to solve a need and to really help everyone around him. The point that I'm really trying to make here is, folks, you cannot create a legacy. All you can do is live consciously and really help and do good for the society. And hence, for most of my talk today, I'm going to counter this whole argument that you can create a legacy or that you must create a legacy. Now let's go back and like really try and remember what a legacy is. A legacy is something that is passed on to us from one generation to the other. It's something that your grandparents, parents, family members, friends, etc. pass it on to you. Now, do you get to decide what you get? No, you don't. A legacy is defined by the way our parents have lived, by the actions that they've taken, by the responsibilities that they took on, by the decisions that they took, by their achievements, by their failures. So really, is it up to us to create the legacy? No. One simply has to live consciously and do what is best and do what is necessary. Now, I'll share another story with you of two men who were cutting a stone. On being asked upon what they were doing, one of them said that he was cutting a stone. The second one said he was building a temple. Now. 120 years ago, my great-grandfather moved from Patan, Gujarat to Banaras in search of some work. Now, Banarsi textiles were really hot then, you know, everyone wanted to get a piece of it and as did he. He started the Banarsi textile business, ran it very successfully for X amount of years, then passed it on to my grandfather, who then passed it on to my dad, who then passed it on to me. Now, what did I get? Did I get the business of textiles? No, I got the business of taking care of 8,000 lives of taking care of the less fortunate, who in my case were the weavers and were skilled weavers. I also got in legacy, fair, fair trade practices, transparency in the way, we, the way we work, family-like relations with generations of weavers, know-how, skills, and most importantly, I got the promise of taking care of all these lives and to not let this trade die. I got the promise and the responsibility of passing the trade on to my next generation and then generations of weavers. Now, what did I do with this legacy? I took this legacy and shaped it for the current times. Now, not many of you know about me being an accidental entrepreneur. I will have to share some light on that as well. So I, it was never a part of my plan to join the family business. I was studying business management in London and I wanted to join one of the big fours, join the corporate. Now the corporates and a plucky, you know, start life there. 
But as luck would have it, I had returned back to India in search of a job and I was spending time with my family. Now the seed of Ikai had already been sown because my family wanted to anyway expand their business into retail. So just thought they always wanted to anyway do it. But what they needed, who they needed rather, was a person to run it. They needed a pilot. And who better than a family member? Now I got this legacy of this family business. I got this 120 year very successful wholesale manufacturing business. I got all the weavers who came along with it. I got all the responsibility, the morals, the achievement, the failures, everything I got with it. Now, one thing is to get it all. The other thing is to manage it. And the other thing is when you don't want it all, what do you do? Now, of course, I took on the challenge. I took on the challenge of working with my family business because I really wanted to. 120 years ago, my great grandfather moved from Patan, Gujarat to Banaras in search of some work. Now, Banarsi Textiles were really famous then, and he took advantage of it and started a business. He ran the business through the course of his life, then passed it on to my great grandfather, to my grandfather, who then passed it on to my father, who then passed it on to me. Now, after four generations, what did I get? Did I get the business of textiles? No, I got the business of taking care of 8,000 lives. I got the business of taking care of the less fortunate, who in my case are very skilled and other weavers. I got as a legacy family-like relations with generations of weavers. I got as a legacy fair trade practices. I got as a legacy transparency in the way we work. And most importantly, I got as a legacy the promise to never let this business die and to always promote the weaves of India. Now, what did I do with this legacy? I took it forward and I shaped it for the current times. Now, not many of you know, by the way, that my plan was to never join the family business. I was studying business management in King's College London. And I wanted to be a financial analyst. And in, if I got lucky, perhaps join the big firm. But as luck would have it, I'd come back to India in search of a job. And that's when the opportunity came up for Ikaya. Now, the seed of Ikaya had already been sown because my family anyway wanted to migrate from wholesale to retail. So the idea was already there and they really wanted to sort of create a retail business, which was anyway the pipeline. Anyway, now when I came back, they needed someone to run this business and who better than a family member. So I ran. So I told my dad offered me and I was like, sure, why not? I'll give it a try. Now this business student who was good in maths and accounts, but did not know anything about textiles was asked to run a textile business and that to 120 year old textile business with all the reputation that preceded it. Fine. I joined the family business. Now, you know, when you're working with someone who's really, really strong, someone like my father and someone who's achieved it all, someone who already knows the formulas to success, someone who already has seen success and someone knows that X plus Y leads to this result. Now comes this young girl who wants to challenge everything, who wants to change the way textiles are sold in India, who wants to change the way they're communicated, who wants to change everything about it. Now it's a shocker for them. Now you might get a legacy, but to maintain that legacy and to run it and to grow it is a whole different task altogether. Now I started working with my father, I started working with his brothers and my grandfather. Now while, while they were being very supportive because I was their daughter after all, I faced a huge number of challenge because now I was trying to shake up how things were done for 120 years. I was really trying to shake how this whole textile industry ran, right? So now starting from small challenges like I mean, being this 21 year old, trying to sell Indian textiles in an international market. I wanted to do a show in Singapore, but everyone around my family said no for it because again, Banarsi textiles were never sold in Singapore. No wholesaler ever dared to take Indian textiles outside because they thought they would never sell. But I wanted to do so, it was my dream. It's still my dream to put Indian textiles on the international map. I remember going there with a suitcase of 70 saris and everyone in my family was like, no, you shouldn't do it. It's a wrong decision. I came back with one. But my point that I'm really trying to make is that being handed over a legacy is not the end of the game. It might sound all rosy and it might sound all so fantastic that you've been handed over a legacy, but the real challenge comes when you're in their shoes. Because right now I was not the boss's daughter who was handed everything on a platter. I was the boss's daughter, the boss's daughter who had to prove to be as smart, as agile, as sharp, as hardworking as the boss, which made things a lot, a lot harder. I had to work 
10 times ex extra, and especially because I didn't know anything about this business. I had to work a lot more harder. I had to pull all nighters. I had to know everything about it before I even recommended it to anyone else. I had was also working with a team who was eight years older than me, who has eight years of more experience. But yes, I might have a vision, but they had that experience. And now how did that go about? I was also one of the first women in this, in the women in this industry to be working. Now with so many challenges, I stuck to my residue because I wanted to take Indian textiles to a whole different place. I wanted to showcase Indian textiles in a whole different light. I wanted to create Indian textiles as the new luxury of the country. I wanted to change the, the way they were perceived. I wanted to make Indian textiles the Louis Vuitton of the country because, now let's face it, Louis Vuitton, Hermes, Chanel, they're all banking on the artisans of their country. Why can't we as India bank on our artisans of our, artisans of our country? But anyway, we'll, we'll go back to legacy. The point I'm really trying to make is that legacy, yes, as beautiful as it sounds and as fantastic as it is, it needs to be maintained. It needs to sort of be taken care of. And there's a lot of hard work around it. But my goal was that I, am, I was not trying to create a legacy. I'm still not trying to create a legacy. I'm simply sticking to my vision. I'm sticking to what is necessary and what is the greater good of what I'm really trying to create. Now the legacy that I will leave behind whenever I move on will be of a person who tried to challenge the textile industry, will be of someone who was trying to save lives, who was trying to save the weaves of India, who was trying to change the relationships of the weavers with themselves, who was trying to give them back dignity, who was trying to move weavers from being simply weavers to being engineers because let's face it they are engineers of our textiles i was trying i'm going to leave behind a legacy hopefully of someone who never shied away from taking challenges and who never shied away from putting indian textiles on the global luxury map because why not the goal that i'm trying to make is that you should not work on creating a legacy you should work on doing what is right and that will truly Put your mark on people's heart and not on buildings which will eventually become tombstones. Today we're at the crossroads of climate change, global warming and income inequality. And all of this can be solved by living consciously. And one of the choices that you can make is the choice of what you wear. You can either choose to wear fast fashion, you can choose to wear environmentally unfriendly products like polyester, rayon, etc. Or you can choose environmentally friendly products products that not only not only support the environment but also empower the people making it millions of years ago india india was a mecca of textiles to the extent we had a huge legacy of textiles to the extent that rome had banned the import of indian textiles because rome was using up all their gold to buy indian textiles that was the glory that we lived in fast forward to british empire where all our legacy vanished because our Indian textile industry started giving competition to the Manchester textile industry because of which they started cutting the thumbs of all the weavers. We're now back again, but the demand is increasing. We're now we're getting back to the same glory that we, that we had during that time. And we have the power in our hand to really recreate that legacy. So my question is, what choices are you making? I, what legacy are you building? I'm building the legacy of bringing our textile legacy back, back to its glory that it was millions of years ago, thousands of years ago. And that's the legacy that I'm building. What legacy are you building? Remember, the secret is to not create, but just simply seek to serve. Thank you.